Park is off of 202 off of Emory Lane, close to the intersection of 202 and River Road. And the park size is about approximately a thousand foot section of the Morris Canal. Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> this is a tax map we have here. And if you follow the kind of yellow part, you'll see that's where the canal runs through Montville Village. Montville was a farming community settled by the Dutch farmers. So there wasn't industry, but it was totally farming. But the canal came in and really changed the area because a lot of the people would work part-time. Also, people came in to work the canal. Where we put the park was right here, and that's real close to River and 202. The significance of the property is Montville Township has three plains, three inclined plains. So you show the height there. We have more than any other town in, in uh, terms of uh, plains. The bottom of one is in Lincoln Park. And the two of them, planes eight and nine, butt up to each other as you go into Booton. So it's a huge, um, a lot of elevation they have to cover up there. Um, Montfield Township also had all the features of the Morse Canal Village towns, like maintenance spaces, piers, etc., all these things that would be included in any town except an aqueduct. At this site where we put the park in, it's plane nine east. And you can see there, you can see the original basin, the sleeper stones are intact, all the riprap's there, all the foundation stones for the engine house. So there's a lot of the original material is still there. This map right here is from 1867, and you can see this is Montville Village. And you can see where the canal cuts through the actual village, which goes right there. So you can see the people who lived there and what was there. So we had maintenance space there and a couple of the houses that back up to the canal. Actually, one was for the workers to live in. So there's still a lot of that stuff that's right there. The reason why it's also significant is because the elevation they had to get up in this area. Um, as soon, before you hit Montville, the Morse Canal runs for 17 miles on a flat surface. Then it hits Montville, and that's where the rise begins. Here at Plains 8 and 9, the lift is 150 feet, and the height for the two planes is 550 feet. So you can see, here's the little village area at the bottom where the boat would go into a cradle and then go up the canal plain. You can see the powerhouse right here. So our park is right here. These two buildings right there are still there. Um, and you can see Joe McKasick did all this wonderful graphic work for us. And here you can see the first plane, the basin, and then the next plane to get up the next higher elevation. So there's a lot going on in that area. This is a picture of the old Montville Village. Actually, a lot of it is still there. Um, this building's there. This building's there. Uh, that's the engine house. The road's still there. It just doesn't have that bridge anymore. <laughs> Um, here's the basin, and that's where the boat would go into the cradle and then go right up the plane. Uh, here's a store, and right next door is the Decker House and Barn, which is still there. And this is a store where they did a lot of the trade and such in the area. This picture is just a blow up. Here, uh, what we did when we started off, we wanted to figure out what we wanted to do exactly with the park and what we wanted to include. We had $5,000, and I'll tell you how we got that in a little bit. But basically, we wanted that to go to two interpretive signs and then a monument sign. So the monument sign will come up here on the road, and the two interpretive panels will be one here and one on the upper side. But you see all these dark green spots? That's sleeper stones. So look how many sleeper stones are still there. And here's the basin over here. But we wanted to put in a trail to walk around this area. The actual Emory Lane is the old, old towpath. So with all this here, we wanted to plan out what we wanted to do first. So with that started, we then set to work. So this is what it looked like before. A lot of overgrowth, people had thrown their veg vegetable waste in there, and a lot of trash, a lot of construction and other stuff. Stuff, I swear, it went back to 40, 50 years. Doesn't look like your yard, does it? <laughs> um, we started March 31st, 2012. We finished December 15th, 2013. And um, I'll tell you kind of the, some things. We didn't work every weekend, but we roughly worked just on Saturday mornings, two or three hours. Uh, we didn't work in snow, and we didn't work when it was real hot because that wasn't fun. Um, but about 23 times, 
we found a ton of items, and here I've got a couple. Here we have, whoops, a uh, mule shoe, and then baby mule. <laughs> So we found quite a few things. We looked for Jimmy Hoffa. We did not find him. <laughs> we have back here um, the flange to the idler pulley, right? And Joe had this piece, so we were able to match them up. And then we found tons of spikes and stuff. So, I mean, it's amazing that st stuff is still there. These are the volunteers. We got Joe McKasick, Rudy Tipner, Judy Keith, John Hemmings. And our first war, uh, I was taking photos. Uh, <laughs> and just so you know, our first uh, work that we started off with was to try and get all the dead branches, all the dead trees, all the things that had fallen. Our town DPW was wonderful, and they brought in dumpsters so we could fill them up. We separate out the organic material from all the other stuff. Here, Rudy's playing with another pile that we had made. So we had several piles of junk we pulled out of there. Um, you can see here, see, look how much we did just from that first weekend. Look how much, and then look at just the trash here. Here's a hot water heater. <laughs> Isn't that in every Morse Canal? And then you can see it's starting to take shape and cleaning it up. Here again, here's more work, but see here's the rip wrap and how perfect and some had fallen, so Rudy and I put that back. But look at how you can clear it out and you can see what was there. Sleeper stones and Rudy's uncovering more of them here that they had covered up with a recent gardening project. We, about two months into it, I was approached by an Eagle Scout, Michael Machetti, and he had had a project that went south uh, that he was doing for, to get, complete his eagle ship. And unfortunately, since he was going to turn 18 soon, he had to hurry up and get it done. We had a project for him. So we asked him to come in and clean the basin. And then we said, while you're there, can you do a trail? His dad suggested lining the trail with the branches because that would define it more. So they came in and did that. And it was one of the things that was a race against time because here it was the winter and he was going to turn 18 in January. So we lucked out December 15th, turned out to be a gorgeous weekend warm. So here's the guys working. So they did a lot, they did a lot of work. Um, here you see them again doing the trail. Here's their pile of brush. And here is their pile of stuff. And guess, what do you see? Another hot water heater. Apparently that's where uh, the Morse Canal is for hot water heaters to go and die. <laughs> this is a ski runner. I mean, we found bottles. You cannot believe some of the stuff we found. Um, the reasons why we, ha we started off with this project is this building, which backed up to the canal, was the home of the Gordons. I won't get into it, but it has to do with the murder. And uh, they were a good family, but they just were a good, good viewers of this, uh, the subject back then. But anyway, they wanted to build the new medical building. It was not listed, so we could not save it, but we had them thoroughly document this house before they tore it down to build this building. The owner gave us $5,000 to the Historic Society um, as mitigation for the demolition. And we wanted to put that towards two interpretive panels and one monument sign. Um, so with that, the sweat equity of the volunteers, the Boy Scouts sweat equity, and the town DPW that came in and took away all the trash, cut down trees, uh, picked up all the dead um, trees and branches and all those kind of things, that's where we got our work done. And we had a side benefit we didn't think about, the community involvement. Um, once we started doing this, because that road, the towpath, there's a plane house at the top of it. And there's really no, there, there isn't a lot of use for that road, but the people that live there are coming off of 202 because people drive really fast, like bats out of you know where. Um, they have a hard time pulling in. So they use the towpath for access to their homes. So that was kind of great because then we wanted to consider them and make sure that we didn't impact that at all for them getting inside access to their residence. So they got involved and they were thrilled we came back to clean it up. They'd come and tell us stories. They'd tell us what was there, what had happened through the years in that area, how they'd play on the canal when they were kids. So it really became a very good community involvement project but also a real education and we met a lot of new friends. When our dedication, we invited them all to come. And we've had other residents that walk the area. 
Here we had our dedication July 7th, 2013, the hottest day of the year, believe me. <laughs> uh, Bob Barr's can attest to it. Um, here we've got Joe, where is he? Right there. He's given a tour, Joe McKasick, and here's our interpretive panel. Here's our Eagle Scout, Michael and his mom, and his dad's back in there. Here's one of the panels. One was done on the Montville Village and how it was impacted by the canal, and the other one was done more on the, the, the plains. So all this has created a park. We have a couple things left to do, which is we plan to remulch and put some more mulch in. We also uh, continually go over there and pick up dead branches and things like that. And we have to put the monument sign up, which we're hoping that uh, Eagle Scout project. So come visit us. Thank you.